Okay, everybody, welcome back. Let's finish up chapter four by talking about this last section, statistical paradoxes. We've been talking about how to summarize our data using some key numbers. And you're going to see sometimes these key numbers will reveal something that's just very strange, something that you really wouldn't have ever thought about your data. And I think I'm going to show you an example here that will kind of blow your mind. So we're going to shift gears and talk about that just a little bit. And the example is going to specifically look at um, health care. That's relevant to all of us, regardless of what major you're going into. Let's just jump right into it. and You'll see what I'm talking about. You know, any test that you ever get, uh, healthcare related here we're talking, is going to have some false positives involved and false negatives involved when we, when we look at the administration of the test overall. So for some people, they're going to be told that the test came out positive when in fact it should have been negative. That's a false positive. Some people are going to be told that the test came back fine. You know, there's no problem when indeed there is. That's a false negative. So let's talk about those a little bit because when we have a sense of what the false positive rate is and what the false negative rate is, we can answer some pretty interesting questions about the test. So let's assume that the following is true. We're going to use some easy numbers here just to kind of make our point. So let's assume that a mammogram will correctly identify 85% of malignant tumors as malignant and 85% of benign tumors as benign. So 85% of the time, it will tell us that a cancerous tumor is cancerous. And 85% um, of the time, it will tell us that a non-cancerous tumor is non-cancerous. And let's just assume that this is true too. About one in 100 breast tumors turns out to be malignant, okay? So here's a question. If a woman has a positive test result, what's the probability that she has cancer? Let's think about that. Let's analyze a research study in which mammograms were given to 10,000 women. All right, so we, in order to really make sense of these numbers without dealing with very, very small fractions, we'd, we'd want to look at a number of women overall. So assuming that 1% of the tumors are malignant, that would mean 100 of the women actually had cancer, and then the remaining 9,900 had benign tumors. Let's just verify that real quickly with our calculator. So if there are 10,000 women overall and 1% of them have a malignant tumor, we can multiply that by 0.01 and that equals 100, right? Just like, just like we're talking about right here. So assuming that 1% of the tumors are malignant, 100 of the women actually had cancer. And then of course, 10,000 minus those 100 would mean 9,900 women have some benign tumor. So let's summarize those results in a table. Here we just have the basic information that we just talked about before. There are 10,000 women overall. There's a 1% malignancy rate. I'm just going to call that cancer because I just can't get this word out right. A 1% cancer rate. And that the test is 85% accurate in terms of correct positive results and correct negative results. That's all the information we need there. Now let's, let's put this in a table. And in this table, we're going to cross here a couple different outcomes that the mammogram is positive or that the mammogram is negative. And we're going to cross that with the tumor being cancerous or the tumor being non-cancerous. So let's make sense of the terms real quickly. If your mammogram is positive and your tumor is malignant, that would put us in this cell right here, right? That's a true positive. The test was positive and it was true. It was correct because your tumor is cancerous. If your mammogram is negative, but your tumor is cancer cancerous, it's a false negative. So the mammogram was negative, but that was false. You, you do indeed have a cancerous tumor. Then of course over here, same type of reasoning, positive mammogram, tumor is benign. We would call that a false positive. You're being told by the test that there's a problem, but there's not. It's a false positive. And then right over here, negative mammogram, tumor is benign, 
that would be a true negative because the test is telling you there's no problem and indeed there is no problem. Okay, well from there we should be able to fill in some information so let's let's do that. So first of all, we know that there are 10,000 women overall. So when we're looking at these totals in these columns and rows, we know that there are 10,000 women overall. And we also know that there's a 1% cancer rate. So right here, when we're looking at the tumor is cancerous, the total here would be that 1%, and we found that that's equal to 100 women. That's 1% 1 of 10,000. So here we can fill in 100, 100 cancerous tumors. Now, of course, over here, that would mean that the non-cancerous tumors would equal 10,000 minus 100. So that's 9,000. 900. Okay. Now there are a couple other things that we can fill in. We know there's an 85% accuracy rate. Okay. So if the test tells you you have a positive result, what percentage, what percentage of the time is there really a malignant tumor? 85% of the time. So for these 100 women who really have a cancerous tumor, 85 of those women, excuse me, 85 of those women will be told that they have a positive test. Okay, so how many false negatives are there? Well, if there were 100 women with cancerous tumors overall, remember that's the true value, and 85% of the time the mammogram was catching it, we know that 15% of the time it was not. So 15 times out of 100, we have false negatives, all right? Now we also know that 85% of the time, it's accurate in terms of giving a true negative. So it tells us that the mammogram is negative, and in reality, you do not have a, a cancerous tumor, so everything's fine. So that happens 85% of the time. Well, there are 9,900 women in this category who have a benign tumor. So let's work that out real quickly we're going to want to take 85% of that. So we take 9,900 and we're going to multiply by 0.85. That equals 8,415. So we'll write that in, 8,415. All right, so how many times do we have a false positive? Um, and this is where the mammogram result is positive but the tumor is actually benign. You know, the, the mammogram is saying you've got a positive result, but everything's fine. You do not have a cancerous tumor. Well, that's going to be 9,900 minus 8,415. And that actually equals 1,485. Okay. Let's figure out these other totals because those are going to be helpful in interpreting some basic probabilities. 85 plus 1,485, I've already done the math, let's just write it in, it equals 1,570. And furthermore here, if we take 15 and we add that to 8,415, we can see a little bit more easier, more easily in our heads, that's going to be 8,430. 8,430. Now of course if we've done this right, if we've done all the math right, this column should equal 10,000 and this row should equal 10,000. We can see that this equals 10,000. And here, when we add this up, 0 and 0 equals 0, 7 and 3 equals 10. I'm going to carry the 1. 1 and 5 is 6. 6 and 4 is 10. Carry the 1. 1 and 1 is 2. Plus 8 is 10. 10,000. All right, so all the numbers are, are looking good. I don't think we made any mistakes. So here's the critical question. What's the probability that a positive test result means that that person has cancer. Well, let's think this through for a second. In this particular case, we can compute that, sorry about that, by computing the probability that the person has a positive test result, meaning cancer. So let's, let's look at this. Positive mammogram. How many people with a positive mammogram are actually having cancer. Well, this says tumor is malignant, so we're talking about this cell right here, right? There are 85 of those people who have a positive result and cancer, 85. 
Now let's divide that by the total number of people who have a positive mammogram result. That's 1,570. Because again, we're trying to figure out what's the probability that a positive test result actually means you have cancer. Because look at how many women were told they have a positive mammogram and they do not have cancer. So what is this probability? We can easily compute that based on this ratio. Let's pull our calculator real quickly. It equals 85 divided by 1,570. That equals 0 0.0541. 0 0.0541. In other words, we're talking about, about move our decimal place over two spaces, about 5.41%. So make sure you're understanding what this is telling us. Only about 5% of these positive tests actually result in someone having cancer. So I think it's important that we understand this type of information that no tests are completely accurate. There are false positives and false negatives. Those can be quantified over the long run, looking at the data. Once we understand the basic base rates and the percentage of time that the test is accurate, we can start computing the probability of these types of questions. So in this case, we would try to help people understand that just because you have a positive test result, don't get too scared just yet. We probably need to do some type of follow-ups to determine if you really have something to worry about because clearly the majority of people here are having a positive test result yet no cancer. All right, so that's that's kind of a statistical paradox. That's something that we find very interesting because wouldn't you assume that the general public upon hearing that they have a positive test result think it's almost certain that they have cancer? we're finding out that that's not the case. All right, so give that some thought. Make sure that you could work through filling out this type of table based on those numbers. We'll go through another example in class. But for now, that concludes section 4.4. That is all.